Welcome to Live at Five-ish of the Late Challenge podcast. It's episode 61 after Liverpool Football Club absolutely battered Brighton and Hove. Albion Football Club 2-1 at Anfield, meaning it's one down and nine wins to go to win the Premier League title in Jurgen Klopp's last season. We're going to look at the game itself. We're going to chat about the magnificence of Alexis McAllister, the rise and rise of Jarrell Kwanzaa, the continued reign of the Egyptian king, the upsides and downsides of being the comeback kings. And we'll look ahead to another huge week in the title running. We'll also check in on Man City and Arsenal. We'll reflect on their board draw and on where we all are and where we stand after the first page of the final chapter of the season has been turned. And after all that, if we've got time, we'll talk about why I'm late. Uh, we'll have a chat about Xabi Alonso news. Sad Xabi Alonso news. Who we might want next instead of him. Mad stats, April Fool's Day, and me telling teenagers off in the cinema. You're going to have to go over to Patreon for all that end stuff if you want any of that, because there's not going to be enough time here. First things first, the Brighton game. A close but deserved win, do you say? It was nervy in the ground, mate. I've got to be honest. Well, with I was going to I was going to ask you what it was like in the ground because yeah. I haven't I haven't even put it on the agenda. So straight off, off agenda straight away. But um, like the end, the end. I was I'm at home screaming at the telly, and I very rarely do that anymore. Doing you like lads? What are you? What are you trying to do to us? Just keep hold of the ball for five minutes and you run the game. So what was it nervy from the start? What was it like? Well, I mean, obviously we're, we're one down within two minutes um, and that's no one's ideal. Mm. Um, and, you know, the goal itself and the fact that it's Welbeck and all the rest of it, you're just like, oh, because it was a bit fluky, wasn't it? I mean, like it's a nice hit, don't get me wrong, but how it gets to him in yeah. terms of like it's it's bouncing off Van Dyke, I think it is, and dropping to him nice. Although, you know, the lad on the wing who, who I'm sure we'll talk about did well. Um, they targeted that side, didn't they? They, they were targeting Bradley and Kwanzaa. Um, but that lad on the wing, I've already forgotten his name. He was good, though, and, and it was him who carried the ball and, and it led to the goal. But, yeah, so there's a, a collective sigh at the fact that we'd, you know, again started a game by going one down. I think mm-hmm. it's not like the 13th time this season that we've conceded the opening goal. And, I know we've turned it around loads of times and this is another one, but it really would be nice for everyone's heart rate if, if we could win some games comfortably. But look, it might never be like that. It might be like this all the way to the end. Mm. And I think it was important what Klopp said when he said, you know, we've got to try and enjoy it because if we don't enjoy it, well, it's not as enjoyable, obviously. Um, but it was hard to enjoy it because although Liverpool obviously come back into it and eventually won, there were still, you know, nervy moments, Brighton, might not have created loads clear cut, but equally, it never felt like they were truly out of it. And it, it they tested Liverpool. There's no two ways about that. You know, like it's a bit, he's a bit of a mad manager, isn't he? He's one of these who does mad things with his systems and puts players in places you don't expect them to be. Mm. And that obviously, on purpose, disrupts plans. And, and, and it looked like Liverpool were like that at times. Like they didn't truly know what they were meant to be doing in terms of, how do we defend this? So hang on, we haven't worked. On this, we didn't expect this fella to be here. Or well, there was a little bit of that, but yeah, ultimately we got there. I mean, it didn't help as well. I mean, I know he scored, but someone gave someone somewhere gave Mo Salah man of the match. He wasn't man of the match, mate. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, he scored the goal, but he had twelve shots. And, and loads of those shots looked like he was playing in his nan slippers um, rather than a pair of footy boots. So he was having very much the off day. And okay, he scores in the end. And everyone can say the cliche about that's what good strikers do. But again, being in the ground, in a title race, knowing it was absolutely crucial to win, it wasn't good for the heart. And I'll tell you what else wasn't good for the heart. Um, I was in the new Annie Road um, stand um, at the weekend. Uh, took me lad. And we were right at the back of the top. Oh, at the top, were you? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, what was it like? So the actual sort of initial walk up to get to the stand, if you like, wasn't too bad. I did. It was bad, but it wasn't. Newcastle still number one for, for being bad in that it respect. Is, yeah. But then the incline once you're in and the fact that we were at the very back, my lad was laughing at me like he was like, I think, I think you need to do a bit of exercise, dad. And I was like... I think you're right, son. Oh, really? Yeah. Is it, is it like top top balcony Goodison style? Have you... It's st- it's quite steep, yeah. Um, and so by the time I was up there, I was uh, I was blown for tugs. Like so, um, yeah. It was um, yeah. That wasn't good for the heart either. And then the game itself wasn't either. But but look, we got there. We won, and that's the main thing. And we keep going. And 
And then obviously City and Arsenal the next day went away. I I think most of us wanted it to go. Yeah, we'll 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 come to that. It because I, I think it's it's really interesting the Brighton game because on paper and I think it's just because it's Brighton. They call it, their name is Brighton and Hove Albion. I think we we all still struggling to get our heads around the fact that they're good and. Like going into the game when they do all the stats start rolling out and Klopp hadn't won in four games against the Zerbi. I think it was one uh, lost two, drawn two. It's the first game after an international break, which is which is notoriously tricky. And it turned out, you know, after the game Klopp said it was the best we've played against them. We're the first team, you sent me a a tweet from, from our mate Andrew Beasley saying we're the first team to have 30 shots against Brighton in a Premier League game. And that's a, it, there's a couple of, patterns going on here isn't it for Liverpool like we're, we're going to chat about the going behind and coming back but lots of shots like whoever we play against we seem to be having lots and lots of shots and it ties into the, the Salah thing as well which we're going to we're going to tie into to this because we, we, we've been talking in recent weeks about that stat like shots is not necessarily there's one which we, we won't get we definitely won't get to till Patreon but I saw a great stat on the Opta Joe thing earlier but we will, I'm gonna I'll leave that as a teaser for later is it something to do with the date yes yeah I, but I realised <laughs> afterwards when you first see yeah, it and, yeah, and you're yeah. like Whoa. what a ridiculous stat that is um, but even with that like because the whole like Salah had 12 shot thing yeah but they, like I know the ones you're talking about where he looks like he's playing in his nan slippers but there were a couple of others where you're like yeah but come on that shouldn't count as a missed chance should it do you know what I mean he's like it's yeah, a volley. It's a volley from twenty and, yards or a yeah. shot from the edge of the box. You're like, yeah, well, that was that was a decent <laughs> effort. Um, Excuse me. But after a slow start and conceding early, we did come back into it, and they are going back to the thing I was just just starting on. They're actually a really good side. Yeah, he is a really good coach. I, I think I've decided I definitely don't want him as our next manager, which is another topic for later. But um, but they're really good. Like considering. If if you look at, I'm jumping all over the place early on here, but look at what like Ten Hag is doing with the quality of player and the, the price tag of the players he's working with, compared to what someone like De Zerbi is doing at Brighton with a load of lads. Half of you know when the team comes up, it still makes me laugh. This that we've become those middle aged footy fans now. Who, when their team comes up, I'm like, I don't recognise half those names. If well, you they me. They've got they've got injuries. Uh, they obviously sold Kai Sido, the sold McAllister to us, who was brilliant for us. But you know, he's still sort of working a level of magic here. So, because yeah. I'm like, I mean, we, 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 it's our catchphrase now, isn't it? Yeah, we'll come on to it. One, yeah, for the merch. We'll come on to it. But this is what uh, people don't realise, is it? We're just this. The whole thing is about a merch we'll and that, like that, that we're gonna we're just slowly building up all of the catchphrases. But I'm actually sort of you know I've been thinking about about you know deserve me a bit because obviously Alonso ruled out and I was thinking well I was kind of thinking well what you want him to do with the resource he's got I didn't like that he you know I didn't like that he come out and sort of seemed quite critical of the club at one point should have kept that under that wasn't a good advert for a uh, next manager but but in terms of like where they are what they're doing and all the rest of it like what you want him to do if you if, if you if you flog players like that and I think Klopp said that and you know as you say it's the first time Klopp's um you know got proper change out of playing against that side like and what's good as well what's a positive for us now is that's out the way that's done that's ticked off and we've won it and they Arsenal I've got to go to Brighton Man City I've got to go to Brighton and go to Brighton not yeah. not at home they've got to go there well, Arsenal got to go there at 5.30 on Saturday so yeah and you know you, you think that that could be tricky based on what we, what we just watched I mean as you say you know I think it's all well and good saying 30 shots and all that kind of stuff like yes Sam but I think the XG is less than 3 isn't it and you know theirs is like theirs is next to nothing like you know the goal like I say is out of nothing there's not loads of you know, great chances created by them. Lalana has that one that he that he puts wide. I think there's the the dunk one that you know Kelleher's scrambling across to save. That's kind of it, really. There's one in the side net, and um, well, even the one they score. Like I know what you said, and like watching it back, and I don't think enough was made of this. Like nine times out of ten, that does not result in a goal. All right, the lad does well down the wing. It comes into the middle. So Bosley gets back, and there's a, it's just a bit scrappy. Isn't it? That finish by Welbeck is phenomenal. Yeah, it's boss. It's a great finish. 
I know. And most of the time, that doesn't nestle in the top corner and you just get away with it and you carry on with the game. So yeah. the fact that we then settled in and we came back from that against the side as good as them says a lot. But that, this is something I did want to talk about because the reality is a lot's been made this and it's funny when you see the different narratives and that the media go with and that they, they all seem to be quite happy going with the we're brilliant coming back from a losing position. So that's 26 points won from a losing position this year, this season. And we've won seven Premier League games in which we're behind this season, which is the, the outright most ever in a single campaign in the competition. That's from the, the off the joke thing. Um, and we've never we've never won more points from this than this in from a losing position. So on the one hand, the upside of that is great. Our mentality is brilliant and we're great at coming back from behind. But the downside is you can only have that statistic if you're re, you're regularly going into losing positions yeah, in football exactly. games. It's not good for it, it's it's not good for getting your head down at night. That is it. I don't think you no. know like when you're lying there, you know. In my case, you know, you've got the earplugs in, the eye mask on, sprayed yourself with your spray and all that, like ready to go. Full routine. Full routine, and then you're like, I can't keep coming back from situations like that. Like, can't we just start thumping sides? And look, I get it as well. Like, you know, I've sort of done the usual that I would do where I've got a bit of time on my hands because obviously bank holiday was so it's been nice to, to just sort of like take in what everyone's saying, watch match of the day too, read a couple of papers and things like that. And there seems to be this bit of a narrative that, yeah, Liverpool can still mess this up. Liverpool aren't the best side, even though they are top of the league. There's a, there's, there's a lot of that going on. And I sort of get it. Because I think we can be better than than we are. Yeah, but, I, but still. this is funny that I didn't put this on my agenda. But this is something that's been in my I'm mind. I'm all right I was with driving it. over. It's weird. I think it's really weird. Again, you were at the ground. I was watching at home, so I was watching the Sky coverage. And even Mick and Richards went at one point. It's mad that no one's talking about Liverpool. Oh, that was a that like, was a mad shout. That. But what, what, everyone is talking about Liverpool. No, but I I know what he meant by it. Like what you're saying is is what he meant by it. I think that even though. We'll come to on to you later. Where the Bucky's favourite and and the this new thing they've got of like Joe you know, the Opta whatever it is mm. predictor, which much crunch all the predict like probabilities of every game and all that. That makes us the favourite. When you look at when you ask a panel of pundits who's the favourites to win the league, everyone's still a bit like there's still people saying City. Mm. It were third, three points behind us and five goals behind us. By the way, which yeah. we all know at this stage of the season is another point. And I, I do think there's just this element of people going, Liverpool aren't very good. And you're like, we're top of the league after 29 games. But that's all right, though, as well. well mate, I'm made up with it. I, I, we could and, genuinely and the, end up the, winning the league. And if people go in, not sure they were the best team. And you're like, that's good. wild. The whole point of the league is to decide who's the best team. But it's all right as well. Like, you know, it, it's not, it's not, it's not, you don't win it out of like, you know, some kind of like artistic merit. Mm. You win it by putting the points on the board. And so far, up after 29 games, we're the best at doing it. But, you know, equally, I sort of get, like, the pundit thing, the line about it a little bit, because it's like, I don't think, we, I don't think we're totally convincing. We don't look convincing. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and why would we be when, when, when we've got the amount of injuries we have, when we've got our second choice goalkeeper, when we've got Bradley and Kwanzaa in, in essentially their debut seasons as regulars in the first team, when we've had the churn constantly of sort of midfield options, forward options, whatever it might be, we're still waiting for players to come back now. We're still, you know, hoping and praying to see Trent soon, Alisson soon, Robbo soon, you know, Jota soon, whatever. And all of those things will could be massive for it. And this is my point. If they come back on mass soon, which is a possibility, and, and suddenly we, we we suddenly play a lot better and we suddenly do blow sides away, then imagine that well, scenario. The, but was, equally, we might have to just keep digging it out. Well, e- either's fine. Well, that's, that's the, the point is this, isn't it? We've got nine games left in the league and we don't necessarily need to win all nine, but let's say we need to win all nine one at a time. Well, if we win everyone like that, that's fine. At the ultimately, because it's just about winning games at the end of the day. But I was thinking about that this yesterday, even even watching it, like how we've all, almost thought because the lads who've come in have done so well, we've almost all become like immune to the idea that. So we can criticize the pundits for not making enough of the fact that we've got all these players out, but we've almost forgotten it. Like I when when I sat down to watch City Arsenal, I've forgotten that Edison got injured. So yeah. the Ortega would be playing. And I went, and I thought to myself, ooh, their second choice keeper's playing. And then my brain went, our second choice keeper's been playing for weeks, mate. Yeah. And I was like, oh yeah. 
But I've completely forgotten about that because of how well Keller's done. Connor Bradley, just, you know, we've just all forgotten, to to an extent, we've forgotten Trent's out because Connor Bradley's been so good. There's a couple of points on that. Do we, the, Gomez has done this thing now where he's the one, when he plays fullback, he's the one who steps into midfield. And a few times Joe, against Brighton, he had the ball in the middle of the pitch in that position that Trent has been occupying earlier on in the season. And I was just watching him thinking, imagine when Trent comes back. We've got exactly. Trent in that position with the ball at his feet. Connor Bradley was made up to be getting a couple, some minutes against Lask not long ago. Yeah, And he, I, I remember a quote where he said something like, oh yeah, I was happy that we scored a few goals. It meant to got on. And you're like, now he's like first choice. Do you know what's dead interesting? Pretty much, yeah, you know what I mean, in, you know in the current circumstances. What's dead interesting about this, which only occurred to me driving over for some reason. Think about the shit that Trent gets for his weaknesses as a fullback. I saw something midweek and I meant to send it to you. And to go in your Danny Mills pot. Steve, <laughs> basically, I, I, sadly, it was an, an ex Liverpool great. Steve Nichol basically saying, oh, he's terrible, Have you mate. seen it? Tre- I haven't takes, seen it, but I mean, I can take a wild imagine. guess because because his takes are on the regular not great. Well, here's one <laughs> for you to add to it. Uh, Trent, not like by no stretch of the imagination, is he a good defender, basically? And if we got offered 60 or 70 million for him, you should take it. And you were like, Wow. That's unbelievable. But on the point of the, you know, the the stick Trent gets for his defending, and I've said before on this show, it, it, there should be no debate anymore, especially now we've got Bradley. Trent should be play, playing in midfield. In midfield, Jack, is but, um, but imagine, think about think well, Bradley started the game. Just a bit of a bit of issue, Joe, a bit of a bit of tricky, couple of tricky moments against a really good winger. A drinker. And, ev- and everyone, yeah, a drinker. Him up now. And everyone's <laughs> just gone. Yeah, that, that happens, doesn't it? That happens to you sometimes to full back. If that was Trent that that had happened to, everyone would have focused on it, wouldn't they? They'd gone, look at Trent, he can't defend. And instead, the opposite was done. The opposite match of the day showed how Conor Bradley turned the game turned around the round, and went yeah. the other way. They never do that with Trent when it is defending. But when we get him back, and Joey was on, he was on Sky before the game saying he's going to be back in a couple of weeks. The number of players we've got to come back, and again, I was thinking about Curtis Jones and how... I think we've all focused on Trent being out, Alisson being out, Jota to a certain degree. Curtis Jones has been a big loss as well. Yeah. Because legs in the middle of the pitch, I think there's been a few games now where at the end of the game, against United, against City, I thought against Brighton as well, we look like we're struggling for legs. And earlier on in the season, we were making a, we were making the most of the five subs because we had the players to do it. And we're bringing lads into the middle of the park to keep the, the legs going. That's gone away a little bit because because we've lost the likes of Jones. So him coming back as well, it's massive. And I don't think enough has been made of that because this is the thing about bookies and Optus stats and all that. None of that, that's not going to be taken into account, is it? The players we've still got to come back into this side and we're already top of the league. I know. Well, that's what, that's what I mean. There's loads to go at. Like, you know, like I say, we, we can keep grinding them out and we've shown we can grind them out. We've been grinding them out all season despite unbelievable adversity. But equally... We could get a bit of fair wind here and actually get a few of our top players back in good nick and then all of a sudden go up a bit of a level. Because I think that's what I'm trying to get to about when I say I sort of understand some of the punditry. There's another level for Liverpool to go to. Like, you know, even, you know, if if Alisson returns, like, it's fine. You know, Keller has done a good job. And deserves every credit for, and and you know if he ends up with a medal round his neck at the end of the season, he will deserve it. But he isn't. Allison. Allison's one of the best keepers in the world. Allison's got that presence about him. Mm. Allison makes saves that other goalies don't don't make. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Crucial crucial moments. Um, so you know him being back in goal will make a difference. So we've got potentially that to look at. There's, there's loads of things where you're like. I hope that happens, and I hope that happens too, because it's it's going to get really intense now. It's like that the fixtures are just all the time now, aren't they? You know, we're playing Thursday, we're playing Sunday. You know, we, we've got the Europa League to return as well, so everything's going to get really intense. It's going to be hard work on the heart. I'm going to go to the gym tomorrow. I need to go to the gym. I'm going to go to the gym tomorrow just to try and get my heart and Nick ready for what's to come here, because. Um, it's it, it's just it's going to be unbelievably intense, and I and I get why Klopp threw that in. I didn't think it was negative the way he said it, but I felt as though he just dropped it into the, you know, the psyche, the consciousness, if you like, to just say just just, just try and uh, try and enjoy it. Because I I was listening to um, Five Lives podcast, and I think it was um, Anua said 
Yeah, is that his name? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was he was just saying like I felt you could feel like a nervous energy in 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 Anfield, and he's like, and when you play, you feel that. Yeah. And I was thinking, yeah, you're right, mate, because I was there and I was helping to create it because we were all like, oh, come on, where's he got that injury time from, and you know, and all that kind of thing. Even when like I can't even remember who it was now, maybe Gakpo was it. Um, he had an opportunity where he could have just got off into the corner and sat off at the corner flag and he turned inside back towards the goal and I was like, no, no, I'm still scarred from 1989. Yeah. <laughs> Do you yeah. know what I mean? So I, I think it, you know, it, it is hard. This is a really difficult stage of the season to deal with. And I'll tell you what else didn't help on Saturday. Um, the ref, the ref was crap. The ref was really bad. I, I ain't coming on here and, and talking about it with regularity that the officials are bad, but he was bad. And, and you know, I got home in, in fairly decent time to watch the vast majority of City and Arsenal. Um, and I was watching it and I was like, this is weird because I've watched our game and, um, you know, he's blowing up for absolutely everything, dishing yellow cards out like confetti. And then I'm watching this game, which is in the same league, in the same sport, and they're flying in on each other. And he and, and Taylor's just stood in the middle of the pitch, sort of like having a bit of a laugh almost about it, going, Oh, might have to book you if you do that again. Meanwhile, like McAllister's picking up yellow cards for nothing. And having to go through the majority of the game, knowing that, you know, one more missed time tackle he's he's off. Well, I thought that added to it massively. I couldn't believe I can't believe both sides, but especially us got through the game without a red. I, I thought something that was because I didn't what something I didn't like about us and I hopefully will learn from it for the next nine games was our game management at the end was awful. There were too many players: Gakpo, Gravenberg, Gomez. At one point, there was there was one moment in stoppage time where Gomez had the ball towards the edge of the box, and there was a sw- you could hear it on the telly. There was a small number of people shouted shoot. Well, I, I, I can I, confirm I'm, I'm those blades for... exist in the Annie Road as well oh, as the cop there? now. Okay. Um, because normally, ordinarily, I'm in the cop. And this time I'm in the annual, and there, there was still shoot people. Please stop saying shoot to Joe Gomez. Like it's just not helpful in any way. And, and, that, I know, and mate, I know it was Sunday. We've been off for Easter. Don't be another George, George. Um, I'm just looking at the comments there. Okay. It's not that George. It's another George. Another George. Um, but he's putting capitals that it was Sunday. I know, mate. It's been Easter. I've been busy. Get off Why? my back. You said it was a Saturday or something. Yeah, I said Saturday before, and you were Saturday. But so what? It's amazing, that, it's amazing. It's mean, amazing. People love stuff like that. But yeah, but this, the, the this Gomez is, things it's, it's bad to be enough, It's bad enough shouting shoot at him at any stage in the game, yeah, right? This is a lad who's never shout. scored. Stop it. When we've got three minutes left of a game that we're winning 1-0 and we don't need to score another goal, but we just need to keep hold of the ball. Shouting shoot to Joe Gomez. Oh, did I just say 2-0? 1-0? <laughs> <Did> I? <laughs> oh, well, heads are brilliant, going. Brilliant. But that's the point. Stop saying it. I know. We we just need to keep the ball, and the number of times we have players making bad decisions, and we, I, I need to go. We're gonna we're gonna go on some more positive stuff, but I wanted to just highlight sort of what the ref. I don't know whether you saw this in the ground, but this sums up what that what that ref's like for me. And it was dead funny because Lewis Stunk had to go at him for it. Did you see we had a corner at one point, and the ref wanted there were balls spare balls behind the goal, and the ref wanted the ball boys to move them, and they obviously they didn't know what he was talking about. So the ref went and moved them himself. Do you remember that happening? Did no, you see I didn't it? spot that. No, what, what was it, all that about? He, he obviously he just got it in his head. He did, I don't know why. Like he wanted to move the balls. Why? So he went be, himself behind the goal and moved like through two balls to the ball boys. And when he came back on the pitch, Lewis Dunk said something to him like, "What are you doing, Nobed? Like we're trying to have a game of footy here." He's, he's, and, it, and he just it just that moment was like that sums that ref up. Like he's a job. He's worth. bad, yeah. He's just bad. He, he is a bad ref, and and it, you know, we we've done the thing about you know when it's over the top, the criticism towards refs and all the rest of it. We, we've done the other end of the scale when you know a monumental, unbelievable error that cost us something at Tottenham. No, you let it go. Uh, getting that one in this week, but he was re- he was terrible, and it, honestly, it was just like we were constantly talking about him in the stand. It was like, what what's this fella doing? Don't get it. I was here, and and like I say, it that, that's my issue always about these things. Is if you watch one game like I did 
our game, then go home and watch another one on the telly. And it's being refereed to a totally different standard. Seemingly refereed with context, like, oh, it's Arsenal and Man City. This is a big title, yeah. you know, deciding type match. So I'll I'll referee it, not to the rules, yeah. to the fact that it's that match. Yeah. No, mate, referee to the rules yeah. because we're looking for consistency across all the games, Tar, very much. But, but they don't do it, do they? Yeah, but that's that's the point, isn't it? Because it was funny because I could tell, and I, it was something I was going to ask you about, because it sounded on the telly, like in the ground, the fans were getting pissed off with the ref. But from from my perspective at home, I was getting annoyed with our players a lot of the, lot of the time for giving away unnecessary free kicks. So we'd have Brighton under pressure and one of our players would give them the opportunity to get a free kick. And I'm like, there's no need to, lads. Don't foul him in that position. Don't nibble at him. You don't need to nibble at his ankles. Just back off a little bit. He's under pressure. Let him let him feel the pressure. And we just let them off the hook and give that ref the chance to to give a free kick. The bookings, were, it just got to a point where it was ridiculous. But something I will say about us being, on the flip side of us being professional, something I did like from the dark art side, it seemed as the game wore on that our lads sort of either consciously or subconsciously said to each other, we know who's on a booking. So we were taking turns to do the professional foul due to stop yeah. breaks. It yeah. was like, you haven't been booked yet. You go and do it. You take him out. And it was like, oh, sound. But on that, because I want to get to him and he's been, you know, he was right at the top of the agenda and we've, we've managed to, to chat for ages without getting to him. But we're, when we're talking about prof- professionalism, we're talking about getting the most out of players. And I know everybody, everybody's talking about him, but it would be a crime if we didn't talk about him. McAllister was just on another level. Superb. Wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, absolutely brilliant. It was like a one-man mission to set Mo Salah up for a goal, wasn't it? Yes. Um, and I think I think there's the goal that Salah does score, he's absolutely brilliant on it. Like, that 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 ball is absolutely fizzed into him from Sub Oslai. And he's like controlled it and played the pass in an instant. It's proper old school Liverpool, that isn't it? It, it reminds me. Do you remember that there's a story of like when players sign for us and when like Gerard and yeah, that yeah, 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 and they'd be like, just fizz a few into them, just fizz it. Yeah. And it, isn't it? Who, who is it? He went to play for Crouch. England. No, but someone went to play Crouch for England at one told point. Told the story. What do you mean? And, and he, Gerard was there, and he said, "I just within like ten minutes of training, I was like, it's too this level's too much for me." Because really? people were like pinging the ball into me, and I was like, "Fucking hell, yeah. don't hit it that hard at me." Yeah. But that was Gerard's thing, wasn't it? Of like, that's see if it. you've got it, that's yeah. It. See if you've got it. But that he very much did have it, didn't he? Because he like, he, oh, he fires it in, and then it is has got a, a fair bit of yeah. momentum on it as well to it's Salah. But Salah's goal. read it. I mean, they highlighted it, didn't they, on match of the day about sort of how every time McAllister was picking up the ball, Mo was immediately moving, and he was finding him pretty much every time. You know, the one where I think he, he he's teed him up and Mo's volleyed it over. That's a game ball, that. And and he, he was on it all day, wasn't he? He was doing little tricks as well. He was getting stuck in. Bit of a soft yellow card. Um, as we've already mentioned, uh, that's uh, down to the fella. Just just one, just to labour that point one more. Uh, I did see, in, it was in the Times today. So um, Anthony Taylor awarded 29 fouls in the City Arsenal game, but only cautioned two players. Coot blew up for 26. But... Um, but put eight players in the book so there you go there's there's the point in the nutshell that it was not refereed to the same standard but yeah back to back to McAllister brilliant and, and 35 million quid 35 million quid in this day and age for a World Cup winner um, and for a player who's you know massively pulling the strings and, and there's like a there's a there's a, a little purple patch at the minute now as well isn't there of both goals and assists I think it's two Two goals and four assists in the last six league games, or something like that. Yeah, James Pierce um, t- tweeted saying in, t- in ten appearances since he switched position, and this is something we're talking about. He's contributed four goals, including two pens and five assists. And of his five assists, four have been for winning goals. Which is, I I always love. We've talked about this before, but I always love stats like that that show that a player doesn't just score goals or create goals. He creates big goals and he scores big goals to win games that's, that's nearly massive. scored as well he got an adder yeah yeah, yeah just wide yeah, yeah, yeah. and it, it, it's funny there was a there was a, another funny moment in the commentary on Sky when like and he was the, the commentator I don't even know who it was was trying to pay him a compliment but he said he just made a point of saying because they were saying how great he was and he said and that's why Liverpool were prepared to pay so much money to get him out to Brighton and Carragher was the co-commentator and went 
35 million quid it's not a lot of money is yeah. it? like these days and the when content to try to save himself by saying I'm talking about once the add-ons are all added and I, I didn't realise it could go up to 55 Pardon. I was like well even a 55 mate it's, it's, it's an stole. absolute bargain isn't yeah. it like as you say so you compare it to Caicedo Rice Mason Mount Mason Mount you're like it's an, un, un, it's an unreal signing this is a lad who's won the World Cup when you start looking at them thinking well, how, how many of these have won the league before and can we get over the line? Have we got enough experience? He's won the World Cup. You're like, yeah, that was massive. To, to be in, a, in an Argentina side with all that pressure at the end of Messi's career to, to get over the line in a World Cup. And before we signed them, I have to admit, like, I'd never really watched them. I'd never noticed them. And he's just a perfect example of some players that are knocking around the place they're just unbelievable and you're not paying attention to them. He is, I can't believe how good he is. Well, and end of as well, surely it, it should be getting, you know, similar praise in that like, you know, we were the first, I was the first, I don't, I don't mind saying like, you know, I don't, I don't why you don't have to like, pretend you didn't say it. When we signed him, I'm like, who's this fella? And like, this is like, this looks like by a long distance, the third choice. It look, it looks panicky. It looks like, you know, we've just gone and got someone and, I don't think he's going to be great. And even like the initial, you know, the initial times you saw him in red, you were a bit like, looks a bit off the pace, you know. I'm not sure about this, you know. And then now you're like, what a fella. He's great. He's fantastic. I want him in the trenches with me all day. Like he's he, he's a belter. So, you know, those two in midfield and, and Dom back as well. Like that's another one as well. Like, you know, big Dom. We haven't been talking about him for a while. And earlier in the season, we're absolutely paring about him, aren't we? He's another one where there's a bit more to come from him again. He's still finding his feet back back in the side, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? And like he can turn things on. And we know, we, we, see, we saw it earlier in the season. We've seen it for his country as well. That's another little bit where I feel like there's another level. Mo has definitely got another level. You know, ordinarily he's not getting 12 chances and only scoring one, is he? Do you know what I mean? And, you know, he did well for the goal. Like, But, you know, the goal is the goal is down to McAllister's like, the, the touch to, to take the fizz off that pass and then the, the instant, but you know, assist with the other, the other foot, if you like. Unbelievable. And it was one of them as well. Like, you know, the position I had where I could see into town, was that I... Um, <laughs> you got a really good view of, of of you know what had gone on. It was like a sort of like a FIFA type view if you like, and you're like, I didn't even see that, and I'm up here, and he saw it from pitch level. It's a, it's an unbelievable goal from all three of them. The the pass by Sabozlai to put it in at that pace, the touch to like to kill that ball with his left foot, and then to play the the pass as you say with that calmness on the edge of the box, and then look at it. I know you've you've said a couple of things about Salah, but and you say the goal's made by McAllister, which it is, and the pass is unbelievable. But it shows how much we take Salah for granted that that touch and finish by Mo Salah yeah. is well. That's what you class. expect. To That's see what from we him. expect yeah. from him. And this is why we'll we'll, we'll jump to him because this is why I, I'm I, I'm really excited by his performance. I'm not I'm not worried by it at all. But I want to ask you about it. And you've already mentioned a couple of things. When, when a player like Mo Salah has a load of chances like that and misses them, all I feel like is he's just getting his eye back in. Joe, it was his first start, I think, for since he came back from AFCON. And it, it, we've seen this with Salah before where he just needs a bit of... He just needs to get into that stride a little bit. So the fact he still got a goal and he was still getting all those chances. I saw on um, the po- the podcast I loved, the, uh, the Neville and Carragher one, with Ian Wright on and I don't know whether you saw it last week they had Les Ferdinand on and they were talking about the, that era when we were growing up of when England just had a ridiculous number of world class strikers you couldn't get a game and they mentioned Andy Cole and I remember this from when we were growing up like people would always be like oh he misses so many chances and Ian Wright and Les Ferdinand both said the same thing you show me another striker that gets that many chances it's not a coincidence it's because he's brilliant it's because his movement's better, brilliant Fowler's was well better than, but the, but the same applies to Salah. Salah's only getting that many chances because he's brilliant, and it will turn around. And just to throw this in, because you know more more praise for him. That this season, that's thirty two games, twenty one goals, and thirteen assists. Um, 
and it put him in another it's like every week he joins another exclusive list of oh, record no, yeah. breakers yeah. now he's joined Shearer and Henri as most Premier League seasons with more than 25 goal contributions so only only Thierry Henry and Alan Shearer have had seven seasons on the run with 25 plus goal contributions and Salah's just joined them it's phenomenal it's absolutely brilliant, and as you say, you're right that you know we do we do take it for granted at times. But it, then equally, you can have a bit of an evening where, well, this might just be me, where you sit down with the brew and you know you go on LFC history and you look her up and you look him up and you look his stats up and you start going, wow, like we've watched greatness in this fella. Like hit the ground running season one and hasn't stopped running since. Do you know what I mean? Like he's not really had a bad patch, and I'm still staggered to this day that you know quite a few people seemingly okay they were online no one I knew in real life but one to them sold or were prepared to cash in no, because there was, there was I, some... knew, I knew people in real life Did you? yeah one of my uncles absolutely Ge- not genuinely mate. one of those conversations where you're like I'm not engaging no I don't like yeah. I, big it's, hand it's, talk it's to the hand it <laughs> honestly it was like it was like arguing with someone that the sky isn't blue I was like I, I don't even know where to go with it what do you mean yeah, it's what, Mo Salah. Have you seen him, mate? Yeah. You thought you think he should score more goals? Like, oh, okay, great. We can always say that, couldn't we? Ian Rush should have scored more. Did I, Ian Rush miss chances? I'm, I'm sure he did. I just still don't see the Saudi thing. You know, I know it's been sort of bubbling again a little bit, and it's getting mentioned again a little bit. Why, why would, would you, you go I there? Why would you he... like? Okay, it's okay. It's a short, shorter trip for him to go and see his mates, like and his family. Sound, but, but someone... equally, it's it's just it's just absolute pub footy in comparison to the Premier League. Well, did you see there was stats at the weekend about the goals Ronaldo scored? He scored another hat trick, and no blah, one's blah, bothered. Blah. And you're like, lads, why yeah, is that's anyone not a talking thing, about is it? it? Yeah, that's so... like yeah, that's like saying oh Ronaldo's playing in the Sunday League round by ours, and he's still scoring three goals yeah. a week, like. Great. I, um, I don't, I don't. Little shout to uh, Adam Hetherington, uh, who's thrown ten pound in and says, "All right, lads, Patreon since the beginning, but weirdly never watched any Patreon shows." Well, <laughs> thanks for the support, mate. Get stuck in. Yeah. Uh, he, he says, "Any top picks for lazy gits, uh, walk on a dog, etc., or new Patreon subscribers from the back catalog?" Uh, well, maybe people can throw in the comments who, who do uh, do do Patreon. Uh, have a little chat with Adam about what's, what's worth looking up because, you know, you can decide more than we can. We've talked about anything and everything, haven't we, on there? Some footy, some life. We talked about work. We talked about politics. We talked about, God knows what else, uh, UFOs, I, I was gonna conspiracy say that theories. The more recent you get, the more AI. insane it becomes because yeah. we start talking more about Liverpool. But... It, the further back you go, the wilder it is. I was only reminiscing the other day about when I had been to see Elton John, so I came on one of the shows in, <laughs> in my Elton John gear. <laughs> Remember this, that? This when we were doing it by Zoom, wasn't it? Um, also, a, a shout out to uh, the absolute Blair from last week, um, who, who I can't <laughs> see. Blair. I can't see. I love how many people love you saying that as well. You know? There's <laughs> people around the world going, What's a Blair? Well, a blurt is George. I can't see him in the comments this week because I've rediscovered all my logins and I'm back on my own account and all that. And I had him blocked a long time ago. So he's probably, ch- well, he, he is chunnering away in the comments because people are saying, here he is again. And I can't see it. So it's great. So if you're out there again, tuning in on a bank holiday to give me shit, you sad bastard. And I can't even see you. Uh, okay, carry on. <laughs> I love that he's still out there. It's weird, um, isn't it? Yeah. I, uh, it's but anyway. I wanted, I wanted, you, I only added them in last minute, but I, but I wanted, this is on the same point as what you said about what we were saying about Endo. I wanted to mention Quansar because I, I saw an article from our mate at, this is Anfield and um, Jack Lusby on, on Twitter, tweeted something about him and I thought, well, look again, going back to the start season, anyone, anyone who's been with us right from the start, I was very vocal about the fact that I thought we were taking him too big a chance. We were doing another one of those things where we could have bought another centre back or another. I, I even went back past bit saying we needed centre back. I what I wanted was an, another player who could play multiple positions. And basically, the the reasoning seemed to be we've got Quansa. We you know we we tried to get um, the lad from Chelsea and we didn't get him. We don't want anyone else. We're going to stick with with what we've got. And. Sunday's this this is from this is Anfield Sunday's two one victory over Brighton. 
So Quantar, who's 21, bear in mind, make his 21st start for the club and his 26th appearance in total. And in doing so, he broke the record for minutes played in a single season under Klopp by any Liverpool academy player not named Trent Alexander-Arnold. So Quansar has played 1,926 minutes. Curtis Jones, he's gone past Curtis Jones, who's got 1,920 um, and then Nat Phillips is below that with 1,724. He's got, you know, at least, well, he's got nine Premier League games, at least two Europa League games, potentially an extra three. He's not going to play all of them, but he's going to play a few. So he's going to he's going to smash past that record. And I don't think Sunday was necessarily his best game. But I, I still, was good. But I still thought, it's, it's interesting how him and, and Klopp got asked about this. Do you know when do you still consider Quansar and Bradley to be youngsters? And he was like, No. And I can't remember when we stopped, but we don't. And it's I think that's the most interesting thing about this season. That when he's named on the team sheet now, and when Bradley's named on the team sheet, and when Keller's named on the team sheet, we're all just like, Yeah, before That's okay. That's all right, yeah. He's such a good player, isn't he? Yeah. I like mean, considering I'd never heard of him before the season started, <laughs> his rise, and that doesn't necessarily mean anything because I'm, as we always say, like I'm the middle middle age fella now who doesn't know all the footballers like I did when I was a younger kid. Who's knocking about knocking about playing for Bristol on loan? Exactly. So his rise has been unbelievable, hasn't it? Well, like there's, it, it's, there's, it's, there's, a, there's one there, it's isn't the it? Where he's he's being pressured by that. A, a, I forgot his name again now. A ding, a dingra, so so shy lad. Um, so he's, he's being pressured by him, wasn't he? And like he, he held, basically held him off, did like a bit of a creep turn, and off he went. Like, and you it were was just Van like, esque yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, and you were just like, this is a lad who made his debut for the first team this season. Yeah, and he's like, he's, play, he's, he's playing like he's been like at this level forever. Nothing's phased him to the point where like. People actually thought he'd gone too far the other way, didn't he? When he made this comment about taking his chance when Matter was injured, and everyone was like, "It's a bit disrespectful." Yeah. The way he said it, which was massive over analysis. Um, but he's been unbelievable, and like it, it's almost like a story not talked about enough about the fact that he's coming to the side and not only you know being functional, being brilliant. And I, I thought he was really good at the weekend because, like I said earlier. You know, they were targeting that side. You know, they've obviously got look, looked at it and gone, well, you're not going to go anywhere near Van Dyke, so let's go near him. Let's target Bradley. And you, we talked already that Bradley, like, and they mentioned it on Match of the Day, that Bradley, like, worked out what he was doing wrong and put it right and started getting in, stuck in early and winning the ball higher up the pitch and not letting the lad run at him because he had pace and, you know, good ball control, etc. Well, Kwanzaa was similar, wasn't he? Like that that moment I'm talking about. To have the confidence to do that. You know, like at a time when you're going for a title, at a time when the ground's quite nervy, at a time when at no point was it easy for Liverpool on Sunday. I know it was on Sunday. You know, unbelievable, unbelievable confidence. But un- like, again, sort of like, it says everything about what they're doing with players at Liverpool now as well. I just think, you know, having so many come through and, and seeing them perform to a good level and, you know, include people like Dan's and all of, all of those lads that, that have played for us as well this season, they're, they're getting something incredibly right at the academy to have the mindset where they're able to come on and perform and not show nerves and not just boot things out or, you know what I mean? Because it doesn't feel like any of them are going... Hang on, I'm playing in front of 60,000 people here in the Premier League. All eyes are on me. There's a million journalists in the press box. It's on the telly. It's it, There's only 10 games to go. You know, all of those things. Nah, I'm all right. I'll just bring this down. I'll hold him off. I'll Cruyff. I'll do, you know. And I, I think, I was trying to find it while you were talking about him before. There was, I seen something about him having, like, actually really good stats from the weekend. But it doesn't matter. You look it up. Uh, he did have really good stats at the weekend. He, he did well. Yeah, he was he was great, and just generally, it just looks like he's been there forever. And and we've no we've seen over the years how difficult it is for young centre backs to come into the Premier League and settle in and and look like the their seasoned pros because it, it, it's such a high pressured position, isn't it? Same with goalkeeper. The fact that we've got a, a young goalkeeper and a young centre back performing at such a high level 
is, as you say, it's, it's testament to the work that's done at the academy. It's also testament to, to to Klopp, and that was that was Klopp's three hundredth win as Liverpool boss. There's a maximum of six more home games with him in charge, guaranteed five because obviously there's a there's a potential semi final. That was a league record new attendance when you you've contributed to that going in the yeah. in the Annie Road sixty thousand and sixty one for for a league game at, at Anfield. So let's talk about where that where that leaves us going into the into the running. So it, that puts us two points clear of Arsenal, three clear of City, but we're far. I think it, it, it's it, not enough is made of this, and it, it it's because we've got so many. I think it's because we've got so many traumatic memories of, of it. We're like we're upset. I think Liverpool fans, or maybe it's just me, but I think Liverpool fans are obsessed with goal difference. And I don't think I, other, I don't think other fans talk about it anyway. I'm having a big look at Sheffield United on Thursday. Me too, to be honest, me, me too. I'm, I'm like I'm, early goal, early goal, and then pile on. Come on, like I've, I, I know they've had like, like a, a sort of, I mean, a mini resurgence is being kind, isn't it? But you know what I mean. Like they've shown a little bit more, haven't they? Well, they still concede, but I was thinking that, but they still conceded three to four exactly. at the weekend. So and when they, did you see the goals they conceded against? No, Arsenal? I'm still catching up on all the all the. No, well, the, the Arsenal game a few weeks ago, which is where Arsenal got that because we're five ahead of City, but six, but in goals, but um, Arsenal is six ahead of us, and that that basically came from their Sheffield United win, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Chef United were absolutely awful. Yeah, I did see that like game. It, yeah. it was like a Sunday league team playing a Premier League team. That, that They just kept stopping where Arsenal just took them to bits. So oh, I think it, it's always, it is always dangerous to go into a game going, we want to win this by loads of goals. Because I think you've got to get, go into it saying a 1-0 win is, is fine. Thanks. I think they've conceded 77. Yeah. Like in 29 games. Yeah. Like it's horrendous. They've won three all season. Like you can't. I know. Like you get, you get like a weird sort of breather footy fan where you're like you're jinxing it or don't say this or or whatever. But come on, anyone, anyone with a brain is looking at this and going, okay, Liverpool top of the league, goal difference of forty, Arsenal got forty six, City have got thirty five. Sam, we need to catch up to that Arsenal goal difference just in case. So <laughs> at home to Sheffield United Thursday night. This is where you're doing it. This is this is what you're gonna target, surely. Like I, I don't know what it is, and I don't know if it's just like um you know, one of them mad things that you really can't explain or whatever, but I was saying this to me to me lad. There's something about that Dan's lad. I don't, I don't know what it is. I just like him. He's just got something about him. Yeah. And I feel as though in this in this run in, there's gonna be like a Dan's moment. I just feel there is. I'm throwing it out there. But equally like in this, and I know we've got Salah back now and all this, and hopefully Jota soon as well. We've massively missed him. I mean, what a, what a what a fella to bring off the bench he is, by the way. Um, and that's you know, do the disrespectful thing or whatever. But I just think he's boss off the bench. I think like you know, a tired defence seeing Jota coming on and going, oh, no, do you know what I mean? And he he's, he's a little knock and he's a great finisher and he just always pops up. And like he's not bothered, he's cool as a cucumber, and he's just like sound, course a score. It's just like playing FIFA for me, mate. You know what yeah. I mean? But like Dan's is like this massive pain in the ass and puts himself about and bowls people over and will score goals as well. Maybe he can like be be a coming bang an trick or something against Sheffield United. I don't know. I've just got a bit of Dan's love going on, and I don't quite know why. But no, I feel I, like I know what you, I know what you mean, and I wonder how close he is. When fit, he was on the bench on Sunday, wasn't he? I wonder how close he is to coming on ahead of Gakpo, because mm. I, I, not having a great I time, thought, is he? no, and I and I I always caveat this. But I really like him. I think he's a really good player, better than I thought he was when we signed him. But he's not having a good time. He doesn't he doesn't look confident. He does, he, and he's not contributing a lot when he comes on. I don't think. And I thought it was really interesting on Saturday, on Sunday, that. <laughs> I just started throwing it in just to wind them up. So Friday. last Friday when we played, um, when we played Bournemouth, the I think the most important, like when you th- when you think what the, the substitutions we made at the end, it was as if he was trying not to bring Gakpo on. Like he very rarely put Salah centre forward anymore, and know, the first yeah. sub he made was Elliot and pushed Salah inside. And you're like, and that's Salah's, interesting. Salah's faster as well. What? Ramadan, isn't it? Oh, so yeah. So, so I you meant he's fast. Like I thought you were telling me Salah's fast at running. 
No, oh, no, he's like, fast, but yeah, he's yeah. fasting. Uh, so, okay, so you yeah. know, like he's just done ninety there. Someone put it in the comments, and I thought, good point because God, I, li- I listened to a piece that. about that. On, I think it was on Five Live um, a few days ago, and it was just it was just all the fussy players doing it, or a lot of them talking about it and saying what it involves, and you know, like they were asking some questions where it was like a daft question, but a question that you wanted asked, like you know, eh, you know, not thirsty, no, <laughs> and it was like. Of course, do you know what I mean? And like, but like, like this is elite level sport, is it not? Like, ah, you just sort of get used to it, and you're like, fair play, lads. He's a machine, isn't like, he? I'm blowing walking up the steps to the top of the Annie Road. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but the, the difference is when you get to the top, you're having a pint. <laughs> at, at no point, like Salah's not going to finish this fast and then go. I think I'll have a pint no. to, to break it. No. Um, but but it is interesting that isn't it that like even with all that going on, he didn't bring Gakpo on. And can Gakpo's taller than Elliot as well. So if you bring it on Elliot to play, I'm I'm thinking he's bringing on Elliot into the midfield to for for legs like he usually does. When he brings him on in the front three, Lincoln, ah, uh, that's a bit of a blow to Gakpo. That and he did he brought him on, but only for a couple of minutes at the end. I wonder how much the how far we are away from him going. Dan's has a much bigger impact as a substitute. And look, we've said I've said that before as well. Like that that the, there could be an argument here for playing Gakpo from the start. So you've got the the impact of a Nunes off the bench before Jota's back. Because the players like that just, they are better suited to being substitutes and some players are better suited to starting yeah. games. Like Gakpo isn't a dynamic footballer, is he? We did you, we see this a lot with Firmino. I know sometimes he could have an impact, but it, often he wouldn't have as big an impact off the bench because he's not a dynamic footballer. He's not fast. He's he's not explosive. Yeah, you want that. That's what I was thinking about about Dan as well. He's just got that beautiful exuberance, basically. Yeah, I think he's just like... Who did he come on the, against the, the week? And he just ran around. <laughs> and he went into midfield and won a header against one of our lads. And you're like, lad, calm down. <laughs> but it was boss. They would like was knock brilliant. the keeper over yeah. and all kinds of stuff. And you're like, go but in, but in the ground, you love that. Though. Yeah, yeah, as absolutely. As a fan, you love it. it there, was, there was a lad I used to sometimes play for either side with, like, you know, just a mate's game of either side. And like he was just, he was daft. Like he was a daft lad. Do you know what I mean? And like if, if he got the ball and like had ran past a couple of people, he, he'd basically start going like, hoo, hoo, hoo. And, and like, and like that's sort of like how I imagine Dan's when he's coming. I was just like, get in, I'll win this, I'll do this, watch this in a bit, Sam, goal. Do you know what I mean? He's like, he, he's like really, really wants to impress everyone, doesn't yeah. he? And he's good, by the way. I'm not, you yeah. know, I'm not doing him down by any stretch. So yeah. That's my little prediction. He'll pop up and do something at some point. Yeah, well, I I think that as well because I know me and you and again Liverpool fans scarred by uh, Fed, Federico Makeda from back yeah. in the day. I just wonder whether there's a Dan's Makeda moment, and maybe we've already had it by the way because because he has already contributed, mm. hasn't he? Um, but but that basically look put puts us because circling back around again, that puts us two points clear with nine games left. But it's it's also mad, and this is the thing about you know people going, oh, I'm not sure about Liverpool. It's mad how quickly the games are going to tick away because we're we're doing this, and if you're watching it live, you're watching it on a Monday, but you might be listening to it or watching it back after as a as a recorded show. We play Sheffield United on Thursday, and then we play Man United on Sunday. So by the time we come back to do another one of these shows, there's only there'll only be seven games left, and if we've beaten United, Chef United, and Man United in that time. That puts us in a very strong position, doesn't it? I was I was messaging my brother in law who's an Arsenal fan yesterday and I, I said to him, Look, if I, I think if we win our next two games, we are strong favourites. Because Man United away, whether we like it or not, like they're they're shite. They're absolutely shite. But they beat us a couple of weeks ago. And winning there, that that will be one of the games that Arsenal and City are looking at going. Maybe they'll drop points. City, no, we have to drop points. Arsenal, no, we have to drop points. It's out of their hands. Guardiola said it himself. Um, but what do you think? Do you think we need to win all of them, or do you think we can afford to drop something? Because let, let's we'll take it a chunk at a time. I know you sent me the the, the the whole running that's left, but let's do it a chunk at a time. So before be, before we we'll we'll be back again for another show. This week, Arsenal play Luton at home. City home to Villa on Wednesday. So yeah, and they're, what, they're playing before us. They so play they, before us, so they could go above us yeah. in the league. Um, well, City could only go above us if they won by five. Oh, yeah. So even if they win, they probably Which won't go Which is unlikely against Arsenal, you'd Villa, think. Touching wood. 
Arsenal versus Luton, you would expect Arsenal to win at home against Luton to go top of the league. And potentially further boost that goal difference, if yeah. we're all being honest. Yeah. And then, yeah, but then you say that, but Spurs only beat Luton 2-1 at the weekend at Spurs. Luton, Luton are better than everyone thinks, I, I would say. But then we play Sheffield United on Thursday. Then at the weekend, so I think this is the, this is why it's, it's another big week. At the weekend, City are away to Crystal Palace at 12.30. So they've got the, we, we like having a moan about our 12.30 start. But at the end of a busy week, they're going away for a 12.30 kickoff. And Brighton, are, Arsenal are away to Brighton for the 5.30 kickoff on Saturday night. And then we play United on Sunday afternoon. So we get we get the extra day and we get it during the week. I I think there's a possibility City and Arsenal drop points before we play United. Because if you look at City Villa, look at what Arsenal did to City. They, they, I, want, I do want to talk a little bit about that game before we go. City, Arsenal, Arsenal obviously went with a plan to stifle City and see what they could do off the back of it, which I thought was interesting, considering we just go toe to toe with City. I think that's it's something else. I was watching, it thinking it's something else I'm going to miss about Klopp. I like us having a manager that knows we're good enough to go toe to toe with them, so does it and doesn't back down and goes, "Come on, we'll swing punches at each other." So all I know, there's lots of praise for Arsenal's defensive record against City this season and fair play to them it is incredible and that's because you set up the way you did they basically set up with their wingers playing doubling up as fullbacks at the start of the game we never do that against City we just play them don't we we go out and play you them could have won them Arsenal could have won yeah. well of course and that, that breakaway you know he, he, he should have picked out Martinelli shouldn't he instead of having a shot basically but yeah, but and the, look, this I is thought the it thing. was fair enough. I've got to be honest with you. I mean, it was dead boring and it was crap. To you think watch. it was fair enough? Is, is tactics Arsenal? Yeah, yeah, because why would you go there, open up, and get beat? And I, you know, and I, as it is, but don't you think that I if was you're just an thinking, Arsenal fan, you think you think you've got every chance of winning the league now? But don't you think they they were good enough to go there and win by being themselves? Don't That's know. what I was thinking. Don't I think I think in fact Neville made this point, and this is the thing: not being, you know, not watching them all the time, and not being on top of what they're going through. They went there last year and played played them and got battered. And that's probably in their heads, isn't it? Like, we don't want to get battered here. A draw is actually all right for us because it keeps us ahead of them. Um, but what do you think? Do you, do you think... Because Well, the reason I mention that is Villa could go with similar tactics. Yeah. Villa, Villa are managed by a good manager who's, who's capable of doing that and of stifling them and of hitting them on the break. Already beat and them then, this season, didn't he? Already beat them at, at Villa, yeah. yeah. So, we, and I mean, we're, I'm taking this chunk at a time, but I've still got in the back of my mind that we play Villa away from home, second to last game of, season, of the season, and they've already beaten Arsenal and City there. So, what do you think? Let's go back to it. Do you think? Do you think Ivan will drop points? I don't know. I mean, y- you know, it'd be it'd be ni- it'd be nice to say yeah, but realistically, no, I don't, um, because you know, Man, Man City are at home. Um, I think you already saw the beginning. Of a of a Guardiola bollocking because he was carrying it out on the pitch, uh, too Grealish. I hate the way he does that. Yeah, man. I hate it as well. I don't like it. <laughs> Ends up having a bit of a um, heated debate with a blue nose friend of mine this morning. Um, I'm sure you're not watching Carl, but I am anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I just thought there's just no need. Like it, it feels like it's for the cameras. It feels like it's for show. What 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 can you possibly say to him now that you can't say to him in there? Do you know what I mean? You're going to see him in a minute anyway. And he's not going to take it in anyway, is he? Because you're humiliating him. Yeah, and it looked... All he's going he to be looked, thinking well, is, this is on telly. Yeah, yeah, he looked uncomfortable, didn't he? He looked like a, you know, like you scolding a little puppy or something. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, I just, yeah, I didn't see... That. And like, you know, my mate this morning was like, well, what about Klopp? He's a sore loser. He's this, he's that, he's the other. And then he said, I was, he said, I was defensive. Because um, <laughs> I then brought Everton being shit into the conversation. Um, but the only time I can remember Klopp doing that is he did it to Shakiri that time, didn't he? Do you remember? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was like, that was like Shakiri had just broken him, wasn't it? It was like he completely, one, hadn't, two, completely hadn't followed anything he'd said. Yeah. He'd just got it's a, like it was just he'd, too much. He'd run onto the pitch and gone, hoo, hoo, yeah. hoo, like I said before, yeah. and just, just wasn't following, shooting from everywhere and all kinds of stuff. But I mean, 
you know, at the time, to be fair, when Klopp did that, I, thought, mm, I did think the same thing about that. Just wait until you're in there, away from the camp. Don't make a story out of you bollocking your own player. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah, I, I think, I think they'll, um, they'll probably bounce back from that. And you know, you heard all the stats, the unbelievable stats about um, City and and their record at home, and the fact that Arsenal were the first side since Palace ages ago to stop them scoring and all the rest of it. So I'd expect that they'll be back at it against Villa, uh, fresh with a Guardiola bollocking ring in, in their ears. Um, so I don't really see it. But, you know, I'll live in hope. I, I think I'm going to go back to that thing and we've talked about it on here before. I don't think I'm going to watch it because it, it's just no go for you. Do you know what I mean? I'm just going to watch Liverpool and, like, you know, I'll I'll look at my phone or whatever. I'll, I'll sort of be in touch with it, but... Like I, I, you remember when we were, well, we've had several now, haven't we? Like tight races with them. There was one where I went and got my hair cut because I couldn't cope with it. It was like I was watching it in mine, and I was getting, I was bouncing around the flat, and I was like shouting, and I was like, "Oh, this isn't good for me. This I need to get out." Just turn the turn the telly off, and I went and got my hair cut, and the barber went, "Oh, he said, put the footy on me." I was like, "No, <laughs> no, I'm trying to get away from it. Well, whatever happens, happens." You know what I mean? So. It, it, it's getting to that stage again where I can feel it all bit I can feel all the tension in, in me building up about oh no what are they doing what are we doing it, it it it's that stage of the season I'm glad we're here like don't get me wrong and I hope we get the let off at the end of the season to say you know well in Klopp well in these lads well in Liverpool and we've won the title the title and we get to celebrate at our Anfield and we get to go to town and all of those things that didn't happen last time around but yeah I think I, I think I might not watch City City games. Yeah, I, well, I think you know from a, from a maybe we should do like when you said before about we'll getting the gym and stuff. Maybe we should take like a public health position on this and try and help everyone get through to the end of the season mm. without any heart attacks and stuff. Because I think it's hard enough watching us in this spell, watching our games. We've got nine more league games to get through, and the, and what we do to us and everybody else watching it by often going behind. Watching City and Arsenal on top of that's just too much. Well, especially because when you're talking about those previous seasons, at least it was only one team we were watching. Now it's two. I know. That's that, that's not good for I our hearts. I mean, I am doing it there almost subconsciously. Like, I actually do think you know Arsenal have done incredibly well. There's no two ways about it, and they played good football and like the score and loads of goals, aren't they? They've been on an incredible run and all kinds, and then they've just blunted Man City. Still, something like there's a voice or something in me going, nah. Yeah. I just don't, I don't I, know why I know. that is. Mate, I, it, it's weird. I, I've thought for weeks, I don't understand why people have been writing Arsenal off. Like, I don't I, know why I, I'm I doing it. I don't <laughs> get it. Like, that, they, they're still closer to us than our, than City. They've still got just as much a chance. Oh, yeah. Well, so, someone said, coup, uh, if that is indeed how we say it, says, um, do a 90 minute live meditation. <laughs> 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 when City are playing, yeah, just us in here. Yeah. Um, don't look at the score. Um, turn Sky off. <laughs> yeah, you, George would be all over the comments then, though, wouldn't he? Um, it is worth saying your point, point before this, and it, this is mad considering how much we go on about our home record. Arsenal were the first team to keep a clean sheet at the Etihad in 882 days. Wow. That goes back to October 2021. That's wild, isn't it? Mad what you can do when you play by different rules, isn't it? Well, someone mentioned, someone did mention that it was Neville, I think. Like everyone was going on about it, Joe. That was the first time that back five has played together, and he said, "Yeah, but it was still two hundred million pounds exactly, back yeah. four. And I don't know what the what the keeper costs. Um, and no one no one really mentions this. City kept a clean sheet as well, with Edison out and with with Stones and Walker out and all the rest of it. So, I, I, I've got a feeling, I've got a feeling that we could we could and obviously you've got to go one game at a time you've, you've got to a, a good win against Sheffield United would be nice United away on Sunday is huge we have to and it's good I think it's good for us that we got beat there the other week because it, it focuses the mind doesn't it when you're on top put them to bed none of this messing around none of this dropping off none of this letting your standards slip to join them go and beat them beat them well it might as well. Sure still it, it, it might. It might. I mean, I don't know, but it might sort of benefit us in another way as well. In that, 
they they fancy the chances. Yeah. Do you know what players. I mean? And don't just try and like, you know, shut up shop and, 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 and play for a draw. You know, they might go, hey, we got at them last time. Yeah. We can do that again. Well, they have got a couple of players back as well, haven't they? Mount's back. I think Martinez might be back. Hoyland's back, I think. Um, so you never know. Hilarious that. I mean, I haven't even, like I say, I'm still catching up on the football because I had a busy weekend. So I've obviously watched the Reds and I've watched um, City and Arsenal, but I'm, I'm yet to catch up on some of the other games as yet. But I mean, I read, I read the report from United and that was enough to make me laugh like about how it unfolded. They were awful, apparently. Yeah. Got and, tonked, scored, and then still conceded. Yeah. Um, well, Neville's line was, was interesting. He said, it's, it's hard to play that badly. That's what he said, laughing. He said it's hard to to be as bad as they were, which says everything, doesn't it? But that's we you've got no idea who's going to turn up. Well, we just got a super like eight pound eighty eight, which is a very specific number from a Green Watcher. He says supporting the lads as we all should. Thanks, very thanks, much, Green Watcher. Nice way to wrap it up. So look, we'll let's we'll we'll wrap it up. We'll wrap up the main show here with with. The, the update from the bookies and the and the stats. So we are now six six to five favourites, depending on which bookies you look at. Where this is with Skybet, we're six to five, Man City are fifteen to eight, Arsenal are five to two. Um it's not worth mentioning the others. We the the Opta uh stats thing gives us like a forty odd percent chance of winning the league now, which is a which is a huge turnaround from the weekend. But a big one that Andrew Beasley again um tweeted was about how the Premier League leaders after 29 games oh, yeah, it's good, have got on in the past two decades. And basically everybody who's winning the league after 29 games has gone on to win the league except Man United in 2011-12 under Ferguson, Chelsea in 13-14 under Mourinho, which is mad, isn't it? So they were winning the league the year we we went on. They finished third. United finished second. And the only other side is Arsenal last year. They went on to finish second. Yeah. So history is in our favour. It's there. It's but in our hands. We have seen Win before, nine. haven't we? Win nine and it's, it's ours. It's in our hands. And look, a nice way to finish. As I saw this is Anfield tweet this last week. That um, Jürgen Klopp said before the Barcelona comeback, in 2019 if we can do it wonderful if not then fail in the most beautiful way hopefully we don't fail in the most beautiful way one down nine to go if you want to hear us talk about more you can come and join us if you're watching live you can come and join us over on patreon if you're not already a member you can join for free look at the links underneath the show that hopefully are there uh, or just find us on our twitter on our website i can't be bothered doing all the selling stuff this week Come and support us if you want. Share this, like this, subscribe. Thanks for joining us. See you soon.